Dennis. I'm Andrew. We're, We're the, the Crafty Lumberjacks, Lumberjacks, and welcome back to Handmade at Home. Home. You know, we've been seeing a lot of tie-dye everywhere. Yeah, specifically bleach tie-dyeing, but because we have our little baby to protect and we're gonna be dyeing inside, we're gonna be using a non-toxic liquid dye to give our shower curtain a tie-dye twist. You know, tie-dyeing inside is actually a lot easier and less messy than you might think. We're praying to the tie-dye gods because yes. we only have one shower curtain, so we only got one shot at this. Yeah. And maybe once he'll get up, uh, we can start working. That might be our biggest challenge. Yes. So we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Before you start, you really wanna make sure that you have all your materials gathered and you really actually don't need that many things. For this, you need a plastic tub, rubber gloves, your dye, a plastic tarp, rubber bands. Yep, and then also traditionally people use a baking rack, but we didn't have a baking rack, so we're using these disposable grill racks. I'll use that. Um, and because we're using the squirt bottle technique, you need a squirt bottle. You can purchase one at the dollar store or your local craft store, but we didn't want to go out, so you can use a sriracha bottle, mustard bottle, travel bottles, and today we're going to be using our dish soap bottle. Make it work, designers. Make it work. All right, we finally got Teddy off the table. Ooh. We're ready to get started. We're just gonna prep our surface and then uh, throw our shower curtain into a bin of water. Yeah, you always wanna follow the directions on your dye, but it's always a good idea to pre-wash your material just to get any fixatives out. And you also wanna work with a damp material. So ours is already washed and dried. So we're just gonna dampen it by putting it into a little bit of water. There's a handful of different ways to create your pattern or your design. Today we're gonna to be using the scrunch technique. The scrunch technique is super simple. We're just gonna lay out our fabric here and then start gathering and scrunching. Pull it in, scrunch, scrunch, scrunch until our entire material is all scrunched in and gathered. All right, and now we're going to start adding our rubber bands. And the rubber bands are just used to keep everything in place. We're also gonna work in a, uh, a pie or pizza uh, direction or shape. You wanna make sure that you use enough rubber bands that you're able to lift the material without everything falling apart. Yeah, this technique is really popular right now and it's super easy. And for the size of our shower curtain, we think it's gonna give the best result. But you know, there's really only one chance we got, so. Yes, that's crossed. kind of uh, the good thing about tie-dye. You never know what it's gonna look like, um, but yeah. that's the magic. Yeah, it's all about that fun, that, that <laughs> big reveal. Yes. Now it's time for our dye. Our bottle recommends to use table salt and hot water. So we're just gonna use a funnel and put it right into our bottle. I'm gonna put about a tablespoon of table salt. And now our dye, you wanna shake up your bottle. And the great thing is you really can decide how much dye you want. If you want it a nice light color, put less dye. If you want it a really rich, vibrant color, put more dye. We're gonna do about four tablespoons. And now our hot water. And now we just wanna give it a good shake. All right, I'm gonna set my material right here on my grill pan here. And that's because we want this to be raised up a little bit so that there's no puddling of the dye that seeps into the back of our fabric. And we're just gonna start squirting our dye right onto our shower curtain there. You wanna leave some areas, do your best to leave some areas white. That will create a nice contrast. It can be tempting to go a little crazy and just kind of squirting everywhere but you really wanna leave white areas so that you have that nice contrast. All right, and now that we have this side done, we're gonna flip it over and do the back side, the same thing, leaving areas of white. It's pretty radical, man. Totally. It looks great. Yes. You wanna resist the urge to touch it. Do not touch it. I wanna touch it. I, I know, the longer it. you let it sit, the more vibrant it will be, and also it will absorb more of that beautiful, beautiful, rich color. And while you let it sit, you really wanna make sure that it stays moist. So we're just gonna wrap it in saran wrap just so it doesn't dry out. And I guess we'll have to wait till tomorrow. Mm. That's the hardest part. Good morning. We left this overnight. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to unwrap this. So to let the color set in, we're just going to add some water to some vinegar and pour it right over. Yes, and then we're gonna run it under cold water until it runs clear. It looks so yeah, good. Yeah, it we're really so does. Excited. 
The color really stuck. We actually didn't see a lot of color wash away, and we think that might be because we let it set overnight. It really locked in that dye. Yes, but for our final step, we're gonna pop it in the laundry on a cold wash with an old towel. This way, if there's any more uh, dye or color that's um, seeping out of there, that towel will absorb the color, and then we're gonna put it in the dryer, and then we're ready to hang it. Yes. It looks so good. It's out of the washer and dryer and I'm really impressed. It definitely faded a little bit, but it really gives it this denim feel. It actually looks bleached. Yes. Does this mean we're part of the cool kids club now? Yeah. <laughs> we want to hear about the projects you plan on tie dyeing. Let us know in a comment below. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.